I'm Kate Libby, the Director of Education and the Associate Curator here at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. And I'd like to welcome you back to another installment of Chesapeake Treasure, a feature here on Facebook where we explore one of the more than 68,000 objects in the museum's collections. So today we're talking about ladies, and I don't mean those big skipjacks and bug eyes and work boats that you see all over the bay. No, I'm referring to actual women who work on the water. Now, we all know watermen, right? We think about the men that go out to harvest fish and crabs um, from the Chesapeake in any season. Um, these are people that go out, uh, you know, often by themselves, harvesting oysters, bringing them back in, and flooding our markets with seafood. And typically when we think about that particular role, we always kind of think about that person as alone uh, or as a man. Uh, it turns out that there's actually a really large part of the economy that's met by women and that water men often would not be successful if it weren't for the role of women in their lives or women helping out in their business. So to explore that today, I have a wonderful example of uh, a a book that's in our collection, uh, Water Women by Lila Lyon. And this is a photograph we have of the author. Um, this book came out in 1982. And um, Lila Lyon had spent the years prior to that uh, going out researching, working with water women, interviewing them, photographing them, and then published this book at a time period when um, we didn't necessarily think of women not working on the water. We really were just starting to get used to the idea of them being in the workforce at all. So it's a really revolutionary book that explored a topic, um, you know, central to what the museum does. And today we have her photography collections here at the Maritime Museum, and they're just a wonderful treasure trove of the oral histories and photographs of women that work in all different ways related to the water industry. Um, so I'd like to explore a couple of those stories here today. Um, one of the most remarkable, and really the one that I think fits with our idea of watermen cl most closely, is that of Kathleen Poole. And we can see these photos of Kathleen here. So Kathleen was working out of Tillman Island. And in these photographs, um, if you look closely, you'll notice she is quite pregnant. So she is an example. She was not from a waterman's uh, family. She and her significant other um, moved to the Eastern Shore after working on tall ships. She was able uh, to start working and bought a boat, a small skiff. She started trot lining because again, this was a, a way that she could get involved in the water industry and not have to spend as much money on, on crab pots. And it was also something that she could manage. Um, she loved the work. Um, she found that she had many mentors in Tillman who were willing to help her and show her how to work. And she worked up until her eighth month of pregnancy. So, I mean, it's an example of, you know, a woman, um, you know, performing a, a, a job that's traditionally thought of as male in a community that was very much this sort of old school working uh, maritime community where they welcomed a woman who was an outsider, not born and raised, not a local. Um, and, you know, she went on to have a successful career working on the water. Um, a woman who did come from a waterman's family, and we have a great photo of her here. Um, this is Patsy Higgs, who was from Rock Hall, Maryland. And Patsy was from a waterman's family. She had older brothers. Um, she worked alongside them. Her father was a waterman, um, and they all helped out. And so um, after her, her father died, uh, she viewed it as her privilege and her pleasure to continue working on the water. Um, and in this photo, you can see her out uh, working with her brother, working a pound net um, out of Rock Hall. And again, she's really inhabiting a, a occupation that was traditionally seen as male, but in the waterman's world, they because these were small knit communities of people that all knew each other, they were less likely to be off put by a woman working in a traditionally male role, especially when it was a woman who had been essentially apprenticed to her father. And one of the things to consider, of course, is that while we do see these uh, women in these photos um, working as primary harvesters, for generations, women have worked alongside watermen um, doing all sorts of the behind the scenes type of work that it might not be the romantic going out and harvesting the fish and the crabs, but these are women who are calling in the orders to the market. They are uh, talking to the wholesalers. They are um, making nets. They're baiting lines. Um, they're doing all that work that without, um, you know, without that work accomplished, those tasks accomplished, watermen couldn't go out and work on the water and be on the water 
all day and then come back in. So there's sort of a silent army of women and a lot of the industries associated with, with water work. Um, this is a great image. Um, this is Susan Briggs. Um, she is working as an oyster diver. Um, in the 1970s, there was a sort of a proliferation of this particular harvest method. It's something you still see today, but again, it's traditionally done by men. Um, Susan was an outsider as well. She was what we call a, a come here as opposed to a from here. Um, she uh, was involved in, in horse racing and had really another life, was a single mom. Um, and really kind of fell in love with the idea of working on the water when she came to visit the Eastern Shore. Um, she ended up training under a, another oyster diver and learned how to do it. And her, her oral histories that Lila Line collected are really remarkable. I mean, they talk about the constraints physically that women could experience in a job that was as highly physical as oyster diving. For example, she talked about the fact that just picking up oysters off the bottom, she could pick up fewer oysters than her male counterparts that were working alongside of her. So, you know, it's, it's not that women were prohibited because the work was too hard, but it might, there might be a different um, harvest amount that a woman might achieve because physically the work is very demanding and if you're a bigger person, you can harvest more and harvest more quickly. Now, this is a great image. There's a bunch of shots of a woman named Laura Ira. And in the series of photographs in Lila Lyons' book, she shows Laura and her husband working together. Now, one of the things you see frequently in, um, in, in couples where a, a, a husband or a boyfriend works on the water is typically before uh, they get married and there are children, a lot of women will work alongside their significant others, um, culling, a, a lot of the time culling through oysters or helping to cull crabs. Um, and then they move off the water, those women move off the water to more sort of land-based job support roles um, after they have children. But in the case of Laura Ira, she continued in the book to take her son out with her on the boat. Um, and there were some close calls because of that. Um, apparently there was a, a, an episode where her son, um, you know, became in danger of some fumes that were on the boat and sort of was drifting in and out of consciousness and they were able to get him back in. Um, and I think that's, I don't know that that's a frequent occurrence, but I think it was a reminder to them that, you know, perhaps having that you, it's, you can't necessarily do it all, having a family, having a business and working on the water, you know, sometimes having women involved in the water industry allows you to separate your life a little bit, maybe into the more dangerous side, which is water work and the safer side and child rearing, which is back on land. But I love this image because I think it's so iconic. You know, it's a woman, Laura, calling oysters. Um, and you can still see she very much considers herself a woman. There's no, I mean, her attention to detail and her fingernails and her jewelry, um, she doesn't see this as her sacrificing a scrap of her femininity. Rather, she's going on board and harvesting oysters alongside her husband as a strong woman. So these are just some of the, uh, the images in our collection that are related to the Lila Line collection. And as a woman myself, I think they are really awesome. Um, I think they're eye-opening for sure. And I think they paint a picture of a Chesapeake where entire families work in support of the one waterman who goes out to catch that day's harvest of crabs, fish, or oysters. So I hope you've enjoyed these images as much as I've enjoyed talking about them. Um, and uh, welcome to fall. So we're looking forward to maybe some more oyster themed stuff as we move forward with Chesapeake Treasure. As always, thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next couple weeks.